Hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Alyssa and I am a marketing coordinator at Laserfish. I am your presenter today. I have here with me John Shoup, a pre-sales engineer at Laserfish, who will be available to answer your questions during the live Q&A session during the last part of the webinar. Behind the scenes, we have Danielle Gilstrap, who is the content manager at Laserfish. She will be monitoring the chat box and Q&A box in this webinar platform. And if you do think of any questions during the presentation, please send them over to her in either one of those boxes. We will collect your questions and go through them during the Q&A portion. Additionally, we are recording this webinar and we'll be sending out a link to view it within a week. This way you can refer back to any part of the presentation if you need to. Uh, now feel free to expand the PowerPoint presentation viewer to make it bigger so you can get a better look at what I'll be showing you today. There will be a lot of awesome features and screenshots of real life ECM software, so get excited for that. Now let's get started. This webinar is for people wanting to learn all about enterprise content management or ECM. You may be hearing the term ECM for the first time here and would like to see how it can help your organization. Um, maybe you're an ECM expert and would just like to brush up on the basics or maybe see what else is out there. Wherever you are in your understanding of ECM, I guarantee that you will learn a lot here today and maybe expand your horizons to new and better solutions for your business. We will be showing you what is ECM, how you can use it, what benefits it will bring, and how other organizations are already using it. So here's a quick look at our agenda today. Um, I will first go over what is ECM, I'll go over a basic definition of it, and then I will go into why you need ECM and some of the benefits that it will bring you. Um, and then we'll go into the heart of the presentation, which is what ECM can do. I'll go over um, all the features so you can really see concrete examples of how ECM works. And then at the very end, we will have a live Q&A session. So let's move on to the heart of the presentation. First off, what is enterprise content management? In a nutshell, ECM is used to manage information throughout its life cycle. And to help understand this broad definition, we've broken down the components of what ECM does. It can capture, search and retrieve, distribute, secure, automate, and manage information. So basically, ECM is there from the initial creation of information to organizing that material to managing its journey through various business processes. And if you're a records manager, this can go all the way to archiving and eventual disposal. Um, and I'll show you what each of these components can do later on in the presentation, but I wanted to first address something you might be asking at this point. Why ECM? Uh, what are some of the benefits of having this software? Or maybe even does your organization need this? Well, the answer is yes, and here's why. It enables your organization to save time and money by managing your documents and information much more efficiently. By digitizing your information, ECM software can sort them into organized folder structures in shared and centralized places, which we call repositories. And this allows for quick retrieval of information as well as easy teamwork across multiple departments or teams. If you work with a lot of paper, you know how frustrating it can be filing all of that paper away and then trying to find it again or even trying to figure it out whose desk it's on after giving it to someone for approval. It's just super inefficient and takes up precious work time. An ECM system creates easy accessibility to these records, um, allowing employees to get the information they need in minutes rather than spending hours digging through filing cabinets. And with process automation, you can get things done a lot faster, whether it's approvals or processing requests. ECM technology can streamline those processes. 
Not to mention, this reduces the cost of file storage and paper and mailing needs. Um, and we've seen organizations who have implemented enterprise content management who have saved millions of dollars by getting rid of paper. And I'm not exaggerating when I say millions. Tompkins County in New York had 200 years worth of criminal and court records that they had stored in 9,000 storage boxes. Um, and here are actual photos of what their record storage room looks like. Um, it's just piles of boxes. I mean, imagine going in there and trying to find one record. Um, and because they had so many documents, they started to consider building a records warehouse. Um, but instead of spending money on that, they decided to implement an ECM system called Laserfiche, and they digitized those paper records and created an efficient digital information environment. And doing this essentially saved them over $4 million. Um, if you want to read more about their solution, Danielle will be sending out a link to the case study in the chat box right now. Um, but right now we will move on to another really great benefit of ECM, um, which is having the ability to manage your documents security. And I'm talking about both digital security as well as physical. Physical paper is prone to various kinds of destruction and deterioration, like discoloration and mold. The, I mean, the list goes on. Um, with ECM, you can digitize all of that information and ensure that even if you lose your papers, you still have a high chance of keeping your operations up and running. In addition, security functions can protect your digital files or even protect sensitive data within a document from unauthorized users. And if that isn't good enough, you can also get your organization on track to comply with government and industry regulations with the help of this technology. So instead of shying away from regulatory mandates, you will be able to embrace them and finally be compliant, all while knowing that your information is safe and secure. So as you can see, ECM really is essential for getting your organization optimized for an efficient digital workplace. So how does ECM do all of this? Let's get down to all the really neat features that help you accomplish everything that I've just pointed out. Here are the six components of enterprise content management again, and um, let's just dive right in and talk about each of these. Uh, first and foremost, you will need to capture information, which is arguably the most important step of getting your workplace digitized. It's the first step, and it may even be the stage where you spend the most time, because after all, your ECM system will need content in it to be able to perform what it needs to do. And because it's so essential to digitize and import your information, ECM systems have created a multitude of ways to get content into your system. So whether you are dealing with paper or traditional digital files like um, PDFs, Microsoft Office documents, JPEGs, PNGs, or even non-traditional files like emails, web pages, blueprints, pages from a book, ECM systems can be configured to capture it all. So if you are starting with paper, you can easily scan it directly into the repository. Um, on that same note, lots of ECM systems also allow for high volume scanning. They can hook straight into your scanners that you're already using, so there's no extra steps between scanning and getting it into the repository. Some ECM systems can even identify documents for you as they are scanned in, so you don't have to sort it yourself. For example, if you want to scan a large pile of job applications, um, like the one I have here on the screen, you can configure your tool to look for this title up here, job application, um, and every page on which that appears will be categorized as a job application and filed away into the folders that you want it to go. And with scanning, you also have tools for improving the quality of the digital scan. 
I'm sure you all have experience with bad scanners that turn your documents into images that look like they're back from the turn of the century.、Um, luckily, you have various tools like these to clean up your digital copies, and this can also be automatically applied as the documents come in. So that's nice. Now, one really nice feature that some ECM systems have is called optical character recognition, or OCR for short.、Um, I always love showing this feature because it attaches meaning to your files. OCR gives you the ability to generate text from a file.、Um, here you can see what it looks like. This is the job application I scanned on the left side, and here is a text generated by optical character recognition. Um, this makes it much easier to find your documents because now you can search for text within them. So let's say I needed to find this document, but I forgot where I saved it or what it's called. Since I used OCR on this document, I could simply type in the search bar in the repository. Let's say the applicant name,、uh, any word or phrase that I remember was in the document itself. And being able to pull information from a document can also be useful when the system is filing away these documents.、Um, so you can set preferences so that it names the documents and folders according to information within the document. So if you are scanning in those job applications, you can have the system name each one, say using the application. Kin's names、um, and sort them according to the positions or departments they're applying for,、um, or however you want to configure it.、Uh, you can also apply annotations to documents.、Um, putting annotations onto a document can be done automatically or manually. So as we were batch scanning those job applications earlier,、um, in addition to categorizing and filing them, the system can also apply personalized stamps like、um, this received stamp that we see here.、Um, it can apply highlights and sticky notes.、Um, and by the way, the text in these sticky notes are searchable too, which is super convenient.、Um, one very important annotation is redaction. I mentioned earlier that you can limit access to certain pieces of information within a document. Well, you can do this with the redaction tool. You can electronically black out things such as a social security number on this W four you see here,、um, and this is what it will look like from a recruiter's point of view. And if there are users that do have access to view this information, then when they log into their accounts, it will look like this. Um, so here I am logged in as an administrator, and I can see the information being redacted.、Um, and I will talk more about security later on in the presentation. But for now,、um, let's move on to another method of capture. Some ECM technologies have the ability to monitor set locations for new documents. So basically, it keeps an eye on places like network drives and fax servers,、um, places that are not in the repository, and you can schedule when it checks for those documents. Again, I would like to emphasize that this can all be done automatically.、Um, ECM can automatically extract information, and it quickly sorts names, routes, and files those incoming documents based on the information contained within them. With this, you can reclaim your time that you would otherwise spend annotating tons of documents and filing papers into cabinets. Alrighty, moving on to another method of capture, which happens through Microsoft Office applications.、Uh, some ECM systems have integrated capture tools that can take files from Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook, so that you can save things directly into the repository from those applications. Um, so once your documents are saved, when you open them again from the repository, they still open in their native applications, and then you can edit them from there.、Um, and because of this editing ability, you can also lock documents so that other users can access it as a read-only file,、um, and they can't edit it while you're working on it. 
So this means that you don't need to worry about multiple people making changes to a document at the same time, and you won't end up with multiple versions of one document. Um, it's collaboration without conflict. And speaking of version control, you have the ability to track the different versions of documents. You can add comments to new versions directly in Word or as you save new versions in the repository. Similar to saving documents from Word, you can also save uh, emails and their attachments directly from Outlook. So our next method of capture that you can get with some ECM systems is electronic forms. This is actually my favorite feature to talk about because it's such a powerful tool. And with really high quality software, using electronic forms should be intuitive and easy to use. Um, you shouldn't need any coding or technical knowledge to make forms or to create workflows behind them. So I've taken a screenshot here of an example of a really sleek and easy to use form builder. On the left are all the fields that you can add. With this particular builder, you can simply drag and drop these fields right onto the form. There are also options to add in buttons, check boxes, drop down menus, or you can give people the ability to upload files so someone could attach their resume to their job application. You should also be able to configure requirements for a field such as the format, like an email address or phone number that needs to have certain characters. The, you can configure the size of an entry field, the character limit, and whether or not it's a required field. Um, so this is the finished form that I've created. It looks very polished and professional. And you can configure all of the design elements here too to fit your needs. Um, you can change the background image, you can include a banner image or your company logo. Whatever you want it to look like, you can create it. A good forms builder will provide you with templates also of common forms, so you can hit the ground running with creating these. Um, so you can use electronic forms for pretty much anything, internal or external. Within your organization, you can build forms for employees to request vacation time, equipment, maintenance, or to file IT tickets. Um, or you can make RSVP forms for company parties. For external purposes, you can use them to make pretty much any kind of registration or application page, such as job applications, student registration, public records requests, and many, many more. More about forms later. Now, what if you want to capture something that isn't paper, documents, or forms? With ECM, you can have the tools that capture just about anything else, including web pages, blueprints, books, objects, and other oddly shaped things that won't fit into scanners. Some ECM systems allow you to take screenshots of your browser or your mobile screen and save it directly into the repository. You can also take photos of objects with a digital camera, including the one on your mobile device, and then upload them into your system. And just as with scanning, you can use the OCR function to generate a digital text from the image. As you see here, uh, we've taken a picture of a page in a book, and the system has extracted the text um, that you see on the right side. Um, and this is pretty impressive because you get to now simply search keywords to find something in a book rather than having to read through the entire thing to find it. And because you can use your mobile device to take photos, you can capture information while you're away from the office and maybe you don't have a scanner or copier handy. And this is actually a trend that we see with a lot of ECM systems recently. Being able to capture information on the go is becoming really, really essential. With the widespread use of mobile devices and apps, uh, coupled with the constant business traveling that we do in this global economy, it's important to be able to get things done while we're not at our desks. So now that you've 
captured and digitized your content, you can start organizing it within your ECM system. To help with this, you can apply metadata to your files as a way to categorize them. So metadata is essential data about a document that you can access right away or see at a glance. For example, for these invoices that we have here, you can establish fields like status, whether it's paid or not, the supplier or vendor, and so on. And this is an, an example of what it can look like in your repository. Um, if you click on an invoice on the left side, you can then see all the imp important information about it in one place on the right side. So you can configure these fields to include any type of information you can think of. Um, whatever you want to use to identify your documents, you can apply it. Um, and you can do that just by adding and removing these fields. I mean, it's simple as that. Um, you can also create metadata templates for a certain type of document, um, like what we did with these invoices. As you can see, all of these documents have the invoice metadata template, um, as indicated by the purple marker. Um, and you can also configure certain metadata to show up for certain users, so employees will only see what's relevant to them. And the cherry on top is you can automate the capturing of metadata, so it makes your life so much easier. Now, with all of your files categorized, you are also able to arrange them in any type of file structure that makes sense for you. Here are three examples of what an organized file structure can look like in three different methods of access for one repository. So here's what it looks like in a desktop client. And here's what it looks like in mobile. And here's what it can look like in a web application. So on the left is, of course, your folders and files. On the right side, you can see all the information associated with it, including its metadata. The great thing about having these three different methods of access is that you can get into your repository while you're away from the office and on the go. So now that your content is categorized with metadata and structured into their folders, you should already be able to easily find your information manually. However, ECM makes it even easier with search and retrieve functions, which is the next component of ECM. You can conduct a search with virtually any piece of information you remember about a document. It in its metadata and annotations, like the sticky notes that I mentioned before. Um, you can search using words that appear in the name or in the text itself. You can also search using system information, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, I wanted to first show you how you can search using metadata. Um, let's say a recruiter is trying to find a job application that was submitted last week. Maybe they noticed that it came in, but didn't actually look at the application. So with no information about the name of the applicant, what position it's for, or anything else other than the date it was submitted, the recruiter can search for that date in the metadata within the incoming applications folder. So having this information attached to your document can make your searches much faster and easier. You can also search using system information. And this means you can search with information like the last editor or owner of a document, a certain version of a document, which metadata template a document is using, and things like that. You can then refine your results to get as specific as you want. So most ECM systems will have some kind of advanced search, like what you see here. Um, you can use this to get specific with your searches. You can also save common searches so you won't have to configure this each time. Um, and this can come in handy when you find yourself doing the same search um, over and over again. Um, like, I actually have some common searches saved. Like, I find myself searching for emails from my manager several times a day, so I have a search saved for that. And I just have to click the 
button in the top right hand corner that says save searches instead of configuring all these fields every time I'm looking for um, emails from my manager. And um, so I can attest to this myself that these advanced search options really does save me a lot of time. Now, let's keep moving and talk about how ECM can help you distribute your content to the right people and places. Um, and there are many ways you can do this. Some basic distribution options you have is URLs that can link directly to a place in the repository that you can share. You can drag and drop files directly from the repository into emails as attachments with no middle steps needed. Um, while you are viewing a document in the repository, some ECM systems will have a tool that lets you click one button to generate an email for you with the document itself attached or have the link to the document in the email body. Um, and so this is what that kind of looks like. Um, you can enter the recipient's emails and type in your message here and send the email straight from your ECM system. So as you can see already, this is much easier than physically walking documents to each person that needs to see it. And the system can make it even easier by automating distribution, but I'll save that for later when I talk about automation. Now, what if you want to make information available to people outside of your organization? You have the ability to set up public portals that allow read-only access to whichever documents you decide are public. You can make these available to your clients, um, to partners, or to vendors. And this especially comes in handy for public service agencies to make things like municipal records available for their citizens. For instance, the city of Newport Beach in California uses Laserfiche for posting building permits. Um, you can look up permits by various criteria like the permit number, street number, or name. Um, and this is what their public portal actually looks like. Um, and here is what the results will look like when we search for Balboa under the street name. So rather than taking up your staff's time trying to find documents to fulfill records requests, you can allow people to access these documents themselves through a public portal. With the search and retrieve and distribution capabilities, ECM can really maximize accessibility of your information while keeping your documents secure. Um, and that nicely brings us into the next component of ECM, security. And this is kind of a hot topic lately because information, whether it's personal or business, can easily be seen by the wrong pair of eyes in this digital age. So understandably, people are becoming increasingly concerned about the vulnerability of their information. But as this concern grows, so do the security measures of ECM technologies. So you want granular security rules in your ECM system. This means you should be able to set access at varying levels. You can secure entire repositories or folders or documents or even particular items in a document. And you can set individual user or role-based access levels as well. You have the ability to give employees access to just the files that they need to work with. Here we have a repository view from the perspective of a recruiter. This employee has access to all of the human resources files as you see here because that's what they need to do the job. As you can see, there are no other visible folders besides those. Now here is the same repository, but we're logged in as the administrator this time. Now we can see everything, accounts payable, city records, contracts, and so on. You can also control what actions users take on the content that they have access to. For instance, um, since we're logged in as the administrator, we can change the metadata associated with a file, whereas the recruiter doesn't have this ability. Another security function that is important to have is the visibility of all the user activity in your repository. 
With this, you can keep track of what people do with your files, and it pretty much records every single action taken by each user, from just logging into the system, to viewing a document, to changing its security settings. And this is a really powerful tool, so usually only administrators or managers、um, are able to see this information. If you are a records manager, you can use this to show compliance for industry and government required retention and disposition schedules, which is always a plus. And as I've shown you before, redaction is also a very important tool in blocking certain pieces of information within a document from certain people, while making it visible for others. Now, moving on to the next component of ECM, automation is perhaps one of the most transformational things we're going to be talking about today. I mentioned earlier that you can automate distribution of your content. You can absolutely do this with your ECM system to help speed along the process because documents shouldn't be sitting around waiting to be distributed. You can set up workflows so that if your employees need to be notified whenever a new type of document is imported into the repository, then an automated email will be sent to a team or certain users with the link or document attached. The same can be configured if there are tasks involved. So, for example, if a new employment application came in via an electronic form, an automated email、uh, like this one can be sent out, notifying the recruiting team. The review task can then be assigned to one of the team members,、um, and so these automated emails can contain whatever information you want it to. Here we have configured it to include all of the essential information about the applicant, a link to view the task, and it even includes the application as an attachment.、Um, and you can also set up reminders if the review isn't completed after a certain amount of time. If the application receives an OK, then the application can automatically be routed to a department manager's inbox for their review. And you can enable simultaneous reviews in case an application needs to be approved by two different managers or departments. So this way, you don't have to wait for one person to approve it and for the next person to approve it. It can be done simultaneously. From here, the recruiter can track exactly what's happening with the form at every point in its life cycle. So, if someone, say the applicant or the recruiting manager, wants to check on the status of an application, the recruiter doesn't have to call every person involved in the process to find out what stage it's at. They can just look up the tracking on any process, and something like this report can be generated. Um, and you can see here the history of this particular job application process,、uh, when it was submitted,、um, and then when it was screened by the recruiter. Then you can see that the task was assigned to Matt Manager, who then reassigned it to another manager. So with this reporting tool, employees can see exactly where their forms or documents are, so they can follow up with the person who has it instead of taking up time to even find out where it is. Some ECM systems have a task inbox where you can see all the tasks you need to complete, kind of like a to-do list. Um, here is an example of what that can look like. We see that this recruiter has a few applications to screen. And some really good systems like this one here will allow your team to see all tasks that are being divided among all of the members. This makes it very easy to distribute new tasks and to make sure that you're distributing the workload evenly. One more thing to note here: make sure your ECM system has the ability to complete tasks on mobile, because business doesn't stop just because you're out of the office. Doing things on mobile allows you to get things done without missing a beat. So, how do you actually get your ECM system to automate things? Well, to create these processes, you will need some kind of workflow designer to create a flowchart of activities that need to happen、um, at particular times in a particular process. So, most ECM systems should have this. 
Here is an example of a process designer. It's really easy to learn how to use. Much like the forms designer, you can drag and drop the activity options on the left straight onto your process diagram, which is your canvas. So there's absolutely no programming skills needed to create these processes. Um, you just need to be able to diagram the steps involved. Just as an example, here's what a job application process looks like once it's built out. You can see what happens from the initial application submission to the initial review all the way to the final decision. This particular process is kicked off with an electronic form submission. So this one starts off digitally. Um, however, you can kick off any process with a scan document or any other form of capture. The activities that happen in this particular process are automated emails, routing tasks to different users, tasks like reviews, scheduling interviews, and sending interview notes. And along the way, there could be multiple outcomes like here in the final decision. Um, and you can set different paths for each of these as well. In addition to routing things to people, you can certainly automate actions within the repository, such as moving documents, renaming them, copying files, and retrieving information. Um, here is when the system can grab text from the document to make decisions on where it goes or what it's named. Um, not only will this help the organization of your files, but it will also help you increase security. Because things are standardized and are routed to where they need to be, you can properly set security preferences for groups of documents and easily monitor their activity. Um, and to mention again, automation helps you remain in compliance with regulations. You can actually automate bookkeeping of your records. So you can create pretty much any type of business process with this technology. AP processing, HR onboarding, contract management, opening accounts, processing applications and requests. Um, basically any sort of process that contains repetitive tasks. Um, it's actually quite fun because you can get really creative with it since this functionality is so expansive and has so many capabilities. Um, even here at Laserfish, we even recognize our customers with the Run Smarter Awards for innovative implementations of our software. And I would actually like to highlight one of these really creative uses of this functionality, um, particularly the automation of background processes. Plano Independent School District, or Plano ISD, in Texas digitized and automated its sign-out forms and the process behind it. So this is what their sign-out form looks like. It's quite simple. So when parents or guardians come to pick up their children from their after-school care program, they use this form to sign their children out. And they only need to fill out these first two fields, um, and then the system will perform a lookup in the background to populate the rest of the form. So parents can really just be in and out. Now what happens on the back end is really quite amazing. Once the sign out form is submitted, their ECM system automatically adds information like the school year, which campus and care type their children is registered for. Um, it adds all this information to the document's metadata. Um, and then it routes it to the appropriate location in the repository. Um, and here's what their folder structure looks like. All of the sign out forms get automatically filed here according to which campus they are from. And you can see all of the relevant metadata here. Um, and Plano ISD also uses their system to be in accordance with state regulations. These forms are kept for five years before being destroyed. And employees can easily create annual reports by searching the repository for records that have met their retention. Um, 
So something really funny actually happened where employees at one point were finding discrepancies in the times when kids were being signed out. So when they looked into it,、um, they realized that the children were kind of messing around and signing themselves out.、Um, this kind of speaks to how electronic forms are so intuitive to use that even kids can use it. Um, and it also shows that because their information is so organized, it was easy for employees to notice that something was wrong. So, in the end, digitizing sign-out forms enabled the school district to have a record of student attendances, which came in handy when they needed to report the information to the city, which is critical for how they received funding from the state. And having these records made it easier, also, to collect late fees from parents.、Um, and if you want to read more into the details of how their process works, you can click the link that is being sent to the message box right now. Let's move on to our last ECM component, which is manage. Everything in this category I have already touched on, but I wanted to emphasize them. For records management, ECM is supremely helpful. It can manage disposition schedules, like applying and automatically track retention rules, and sending notifications when records have reached the end of their life cycle. With version tracking, you can update documents without having to save multiple files. It saves previous versions too, so that if you need to revert back to a previous version, you can do that. Um, this also makes it easy to see what changes have been made to a document in its past. In addition to helping with records management, ECM can also benefit the management of your processes. With this technology, you can have a very clear overall process visibility.、Um, you have reporting tools that I mentioned before, where you can see different stages of each process. Um, this gives you direct insight into the health of your processes with historical and live data.、Um, this way, you can keep redesigning a process to make it more efficient.、Um, it kind of gives you a, a bird's eye view of your processes, so you can easily point out, like, oh, there's a manual step that can be automated, or, or there's a completely unnecessary task that you can just completely take out. Being able to see All team members' task load and completion can help you identify bottlenecks as well. So overall, managing your business processes is made easier, and just being able to do these things can be really transformative for your entire organization. To conclude, ECM really is the key to transforming your workplace into a digital and automated environment. If you would like to see enterprise content management in action,、um, and if you would like to see all these really neat features、uh, function in real life,、um, schedule a demo with us. Danielle is sending out a link right now to make an appointment with us over in the chat box,、um, and here are my contact details too. So if you have any questions after this webinar is over, feel free to send me an email or give me a call. Um, and right now, if you have any burning questions, we will now go into the Q and A. I have John Shoup, an ECM pre-sales engineer, with me to help answer your questions. So go ahead and submit your questions to the Q and A or chat box, and we will take a look right now.